We are at one minute to midnight. That's a saying, guys. It's a saying that basically sees we're one minute away from the end. One minute away from destruction. Yes, this is God's Greatest Nation. I'm Aaron James, and this is your latest Rangers news. What on earth? I'm on about one minute to midnight. What is that? What is he on about now? Well, this club stands at one minute to midnight. Um, with all the latest news from Dave King, all the latest um, kind of stories that are emerging from the club over the last 24 hours, um, you know, in terms of the board, have been openly at war now between Dave, the Dave King's side and obviously the Parks side. Park side, yep, that's the Park side, you know, Douglas Park and his shameful son, Graham. Um, and the fact that this board are, you know, sleepwalking into disaster, sleepwalking into Armageddon, sleepwalking into us becoming Aberdeen, only bigger. Sleepwalking into the SPL becoming a one-team league. Sleepwalking into allowing Celtic to not go five in a row, but 10 in a row, 12 in a row, 15 in a row, and who knows where it could end. A board that, in my opinion, and it is just my opinion here, um, and I've I listened to a number of podcasts this morning, uh, one in particular, and I, I think some of the people on that podcast are showing some real cowardice in terms of standing up to the fam to the board, real cowardice in terms of standing up to the Park family as well. Um, I'm not going to name names, but you, know, you probably know who I'm on about. Um, you know, at the end of the day, this club stands uh, on a real precipice of, you know, being an also ran for a long period of time. You know, we are moments away from the Spanielification, the Borussia Dortmundification of this club. You know, the Bayern Munichification or the Barcelonaification of that club across the city. We really are there. This club needs change. Now, whether you believe that should be Dave King or someone else, there is one thing I think we can all agree on, whether it's, you know, whatever it is, is that the present board in all its current state need to be gone from this football club. That all those people involved with this present board need to be kicked out of this football club because they are doing nothing but run this club in the interests of themselves. They are running it because they like the tag of Rangers director. They are running it to line their own pockets. They are running running it on an ego trip, on an ego boost, and being a right bunch of knobs about it. For me, the Park family are like a curse, like a virus that is infecting the club and, and, and seeking to basically destroy it from within. Um, you know, it is really a bad state of affairs. And with news as well today emerging that, in effect, Douglas Park and his cronies, his faceless cronies, forced Stephen Gerrard out of the club and are now seeking to, you know, take this club down a spiral where we sleepwalk into Celtic winning 55, 56, 57, 58, 59 and 60. And us been powerless to stop them uh, with this present board. Uh, Dave King has has made more comments uh, which have come out today in a number of media publications. I'm going to look at those comments. Look, I'm not saying that Dave King is the man. You know, yes, he may well be better than what we have already got, because let's face it, not much else could be worse um, than what we currently have running this football club. A group of people who have singularly proved that they are not fit to run a bath, that they could not organise a piss up in the proverbial brewery. A group of people that I would not trust to look after my Labrador. Let's have a little look at what Dave King has said. He said, the faceless names on the present board have presided over the hollowing out of our club. The significant cash received from supporters and from the sale of Calvin Bassey, Joe Aribo and Nathan Patterson have been wasted on poor recruitment of managers and players, poor cost control, oversight of infrastructure projects, and which severely compromised Champions League participation this year. I think he is 100% right. Now, in terms of faceless, he means people who will not come out and address the media, who will not come out and address the fans, people who will not speak to the fans. Douglas Park, Graham Park, being a prime amongst them, pair a pair of absolute wankers. They do need to be kicked out. I must stop swearing. Um, you know, he's right as well. Where has all of the money gone? What has the money been used for? Well, I think, first of all, it's been used to pay off the sacking of managers through bad decisions made by the present board, bad hirings, bad people put into key positions, bad people giving control over spending. You know, there's been a situation where this club have given la large amounts of money to people like Ross Wilson, people like Michael Beale, who have made an absolute dog's breakfast of actually signing anyone, who have singularly proved that they have the have gross levels of incompetence when it comes to identifying a good player and what will be the future of this club. You know, in terms of poor cost control as well, overrunning costs for Edmiston House, overrunning costs for sports bars, overrunning costs for museums, 
I'm not saying that Edmiston House and the museum and that the sports bars are a bad thing because let's face it, we do need to explore all revenue streams and bring in as much money from external sources as possible until a trading model is financially viable and the fact that the Scottish League is not funded well due to the SFA being incompetent. Although I would say that the SFA are the SFA and the SFA board are probably, I would say, more competent than Rangers board. He's right as well about the fact that the oversight in terms of this ridiculous uh, stadium overrun in terms of the redevelopment of the Copeland Road stand as well down to the poor project management, poor oversight of the board, poor control of the board led to, number one, sufficient funds not being available to strengthen the team further going into the Champions League qualifiers and the fact that we couldn't play that game at Ibrox, which would have given us an added advantage. Dave King is absolutely spot on with what he says in this and it is absolutely shameless in my opinion that this board have such a colossal cock up um, as what is going on at this club at this moment in time. Uh, King went on to make further comments he says, yet again, those same faceless people want the chance to do it all again. When John Bennett took over, he tried to turn things round, but had no human or financial resources to support him. So it appears that we do owe John Bennett an apology. It appears from what, uh, what Dave King is saying is that uh, Bennett was fully willing to make changes, was fully you know, wanting to make these changes, was fully wanting to commit funds to, into a rebuild of the squad, but was never given the backing by the investors and the board was pretty much blocked at every turn from doing so, probably by the Park family and by the others. And it seems to me that with the Park family and with others on the Rangers board, their hatred of Dave King overrules their desire to move this club forward, to get this club moving in the right direction. You know, it appears to me that what Simon Jordan said when he labelled the Rangers board childish and small, narrow minded, he was absolutely spot on. And it appears the comments of Dave King are backing up what Simon Jordan said, that Douglas Park is childish. He is small minded. He is narrow minded and he is someone not fit to run a football club. Um, he's also responsible as well through the board for probably making John Bennett ill as well. And he says, he's writing what he says. These faceless people want the chance to do it all over again. They want the chance to continue to run our club down, to continue to hollow out our club, continue to run our club down to the point where we will become little more than a bigger version of Aberdeen in the Scottish League, which to me is wholly unacceptable. Guys, it's damning stuff. It's firecracker stuff from John, from Dave King. I'd love to know your thoughts on this. And I know some of you are not all fans of Dave King, but for putting to one side that it's Dave King saying it, do you not think that what he is saying actually is true about the present board? The present board are not fit for purpose. They are not fit to run this club. What else did he say? He says, it's amazing the same people who got us into this trouble want to continually control by placing as a professional chairman their own puppet who will have no knowledge of the club or financial interest in its future. We are sleepwalking Celtic towards 55, 56 and 57 instead of trying to stop them. This board will go down as an infamy in the club's history. Strong, powerful words from Mr King, but true words spoken. And like I said, put to get whatever your thoughts are on Dave King, put it to the side for one minute. If this was someone else making these comments about the Rangers board, someone in the know, a Graham Soonis, for example, a John Gregg, a, let's think of someone else, you know, who we respect, a Chris Boyd, for example, a, you know, a Terry Butcher, a Richard Goff, Nacho Novo, someone of, those, of that stature, you know, making these comments, a Barry Ferguson, would we not all unite behind these comments at that point? Quite possibly. You know, it, it, it's true in what he says, you know, at the time where we need a strong leadership, where we need a strong direction, we, you know, none of these people, none of these so-called Rangers fans that sit on our board, and I would dispute that the Park family are Rangers fans in the slightest, um, because no true Rangers fan would do what they are doing to this club. Um, you know, I would say that he's right. They put into place someone who is duly a puppet, someone who is a yes man to what they want, someone who will blindly follow their way of doing things, which, as we've seen over the last 
you know, three, four, five years has not worked. As we've seen, you know, over these last three, four, five years has been an utter disaster, has moved the club backwards from a season where we were undefeated, where we won the league title, where we had our foot on Celtic's throats, where we have now allowed Celtic up from the canvas and have now turned the situation around where we are down on the canvas and our, their foot is on our throats and we are choking out of this contest. You know, they're right. They're right. They have no knowledge of the club or the financial interest in its future. Correct. Their only financial interest is in themselves, into lining their own pockets. As Graham Sooners himself said, this board have no football brain between them. They do not know how to direct the club. They do not know how to move the club forward. They are absolutely clueless. And he is right in what he says. Unfortunately, we are moving towards a situation where Celtic will win not only 55, 56, 57, but probably 58, 59 and 60 as well. You know, leading to the situation of this board being the board that allowed Celtic to become the most successful team in football and us to become a footnote in history. Uh, in terms of that, which to me is an absolute disgrace upon this board, upon this group of individuals who run our club into the ground at this moment in time. Then he talked about Stephen Gerrard. Stephen was, was absolutely kicked out, he said. I have no doubts about that. Stephen did not want to leave at that point in time. He would have left, but not then. It's absolutely true that we went backwards from that point. It was the ethos, the standards, everything about the club that Stephen instilled. We then, we started to go down from there. Now, I know some people have tried to cast doubt on this and said, well, Gerard was looking at the Newcastle job. He was looking at the Villa job. Had he been fully back? Had he been given what he wanted in the transfer market, had he been given what he wanted in terms of his overhaul of the club and the power that he wanted to change things, would he have walked? I doubt it. I think, yes, like Dave King says in the future, he may have walked for a Premier League job. Um, you know, I think we all know the job that he probably wanted. Um you know, but at the end of the day, I honestly do believe that Gerard probably would have stayed for another year, 18 months at least, to see his project out. You know, I think there was a desire there for Gerard to take this team into the Champions League to compete in the Champions League. And he wanted the money to do that. And he wasn't given it. And he was, in effect, forced out. And it's the Park family who are responsible. I mean, looking at the other comments made by uh, by Dave King and, and others, that it does seem that it was Douglas Park who effectively forced him out through his inability and his unwillingness to back Stephen Gerrard. But King is right in what he says. From the moment Stephen Gerrard won 55, that should have been the start of a new beginning. That should have been the start of a new acceleration, a new a new start for Rangers, a rebirth of Rangers as the as the dominant force in Scotland. But it didn't happen. Why didn't it happen? Because, as Gerard said, you had to fix the roof while the sun was shining. But did we? Did we fix the roof while the sun was shining? No. We allowed it to develop holes. We allowed the roof to fall in. And the building is in currently in the process of collapsing all around us as well. As, in effect, the Park family and the board fiddle while Glasgow burns. Uh, uh, King went on to make further comments. And, you know, I think in terms of what Dave King is calling for, uh, uh, this EGM, this meeting of minds, you know, there is a, a genuine fear, I think, amongst the present board, uh, if they allowed it to happen, that they would be thrown out and they would lose the tag that they all want. They'd lose their jerseys. They'd lose their, their blazers and their ties. They would no longer be directors of this football club because the fans, and I think the real fans, I'm not talking about the... The, in, the institutional investors or the institutional shareholders. And I had to say, I balked at a comment that was made on another podcast this morning when the, the person speaking said that, in his opinion, that King clearly hasn't got the support of the other board members, the other investors and the other big shareholders into the club. Well, I would dispute that those big shareholders, that those investors are, you know, as important as the real fans, the fans that that, that are out there every single day, every single Saturday, every single Sunday, every single Thursday on the terraces at Ibrox backing the team, the fans that go into the club shops, the fans that go into Edmiston House, the fans that watch Rangers TV, that subscribe to Rangers TV, the real fans, not the shareholders, not the biggie, Billy Big Bollocks, multi-millionaire wankers who run hedge funds that invest in our, in our club. Yes, I agree they are important because without them our club would go bust, but what is more important, and I think I think that all fan media need to realise, is the people that really matter, the people that actually genuinely matter, are not 
the directors at the top, that are not the shareholders, that are not those investors. They are the fans on the street, the real Rangers fans, the real Blue Noses out there that actually love this club, whose you know, lives, weekends, weeks can be ruined by poor results. And in the case of the old firm, a whole week or a whole series of months up until the next old firm can be ruined by one result. It's them that matters. And Dave King's right. They should be the ones that decide the future of this club. They should be the ones who decide the future direction of this club, because I honestly believe the investors and the shareholders that are fiddling while Rome burns are not fit to take decisions on what is best for this football club. You, they've prove that with bad decision after bad decision after bad decision after disastrous decision for Rangers Football Club. King says, I have repeatedly said that we as shareholders are the only custodians of the club for its true owner. Spot on. The true owner is not the shareholder. It is not the businessman at the top of the club. It is the fan on the terrace, the man in the street, the woman in the street, the child in the street. That who is, is the real owners of Rangers Football Club. I do not believe that the supporters have any confidence in the present board to turn things around. Guys, like I said, put together, put to one side what you think of Dave King and think of that statement. For me, it is a million percent true. The complete lack of leadership of this faceless crew is almost clearly demonstrated by the simple fact that not one of them was willing to show their face by stepping in as an interim chair when John stepped down due to ill health. Shame on them. 100%. Lurking in the shadows in a time of need is not the Rangers way. And that is why I have again offered to assist. If there is a better option, I would support that. But I cannot support a leaderless, rudderless board that is in a crisis of its own making. So it's quite clear that Dave King puts the blame solely on this board, solely on the Park family, solely on the people who are running this club into the ground. And that's what this present board are doing. They are destroying an institution. They are destroying one of the biggest clubs in world football with their indecision, their incompetence and their downright stupidity. As I've said a number of times, I challenge the Park family, I challenge anyone from this present Rangers board to come onto the podcast and debate that the decisions they have taken are the right ones for this football club. They won't because every decision they take for this football club is the wrong one as has been proved by the trophy hall, by the rebuild after rebuild, sacking after sacking, the financial overrun after financial overrun after financial overrun, the disastrous decision after disastrous decision after disastrous decision that has been taken by a group of individuals, like I said, who I would not trust to look after my dog, let alone a football club. Guys, I'd love to know your thoughts, your opinions, your views on what Dave King has said. Like I said, put to, to one side, your views on Dave King. Listen to what this man is saying. Listen to the comments that he is making, because I believe that he is speaking what a lot, what the vast majority of Rangers fans actually genuinely think about this absolute disgrace of a bunch of cretins that run this club. That is what they are. Cretins, morons, muppets, clueless fools. All of those things they are. Just absolutely useless. And what I have said, and I've said on X and I've called on X, that all fan media, all fan media should grow a pair of bollocks and actually stand up to these people. Not worry about losing their press access, not worry about, you know, ingratiating themselves to the club, which seems to be the overwhelming feeling from some of the fan media out there. And I think of a couple of organisations in particular when I make that comment, and I don't care what they think of me. I don't care if they want to come and bite back at me because I'm telling you something, guys, you are not standing up for the fans. You are standing up purely for yourselves and protecting your own self-interests. That is the truth of the matter. You know, there are some fan podcasts out there that genuinely do care for this club and do care for the supporters. The Rabble, for example, Martin, the Rabble, phenomenal. I've got to say that I'm not on the Rangers podcast, Rangers journal. Um, absolutely superb. You know, people who will genuinely come, there are, there are others, and I'm missing some out, but there are genuinely, are genuinely some others. But there are some within the fan media organisation that need to take a long, hard look at themselves and think, am I standing up for the supporters? Am I standing up for the real fans, the people who actually matter? Or am I just protecting my own arse and trying to ingratiate myself to the club rather than doing what I should be doing as a podcaster? Guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you're from one of those podcasts that I'm kind of calling out and you know who you are, I don't care what you think. 
see you later guys as always on the way out please drop a like on the video please drop a comment and also remember as well you know this is your channel this is your chance to have your say please remember always we are the people Thank you.